director of light sport and ultralight flying these days doing some great work for that company and we wanted to come by and have a look at the now renamed Alpha Electro. This was known as the Watts Up before, which was clever, but probably not the right name in the long run, and obviously they changed it. So we're looking at it here, electric motor up front, battery pack, and these all remove, and the whole idea here is this is a training aircraft, so you fly, you come, you do your training, you yank the batteries out, you put new batteries back in, you go back up in the air again. Makes a lot of sense. Jim Lawrence is going down to visit Pipistrelle. Tell me a little bit about that, Jim. Well, I've, uh, I've been trying to get down there now for the last six months. It got weathered out um, six months ago, so I'm finally going to get there now. It looks like the weather's good. I was trying to do it in winter. It's not a good thing to do anywhere. And really looking forward to flying the Electro. Uh, especially now that they've got it really optimized for the training mission. 45 minute recharge on the batteries. You want to talk about this or shall I jump in on it? Yeah, no, that's uh, very interesting. I didn't know that particular fact about it, but I will say Edges Ovina. I, I think that's pretty close to the name of the town. I'm afraid I'm butchering it a little bit. Sorry, folks, Slovenia. but uh, Slovenia, yeah. <laughs> uh, quite a pretty area with beautiful mountains nearby, but they have a wind condition there that torments them sometimes. You've been there before, couldn't fly. I got lucky when I visited and was able to fly, but you're looking for more this time. Yes, I am. I was stuck there five days, oh, no. and we never flew a minute. So I'm hoping to do better this time. I'm watching the weather before I go down there. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to ride down with the guys and tell us a little bit more about what you expect from the Alpha Electro, Jim. Uh, from uh, the talk I heard with Tine two days ago, Tine Tomazik, who is the chief engineer there, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they've really optimized the training mission so that they can realistically do an hour's worth of touch and goes or not touch and goes but landing cycles in the training environment and meanwhile they have a battery pack that's sitting on the ground so each aircraft only needs two battery packs to be able to operate all day long because they can charge in 45 minutes typical mission is an hour they land pull the packs in five minutes boom put that one on the chargers up they go for another with another student and uh, it's it's ideal not a cross-country airplane of course because there's just not a lot of recharging uh, potential uh, yet infrastructure anywhere but uh, that's coming as you know and they really feel that this is going to be a, a quite a, a quite an infusion of cost effectiveness for the training market he was also claiming a 2000 hour tbo now i don't know if that's for the battery pack or for the whole airplane with the wear and tear they expect to do on it so i've got to clarify that more well, I would imagine that, you know, TBO, I'm not even sure quite what that means in the electric space, but obviously you look at it and check whatever it is you check on an electric motor and the batteries and the charging system, I suppose, maybe goes through some evaluation. We'll find out more in your full-length report later. But that's a fascinating idea that in 45 minutes they can recharge this, be back in the air. So we already know this in the light space electric works today i mean here's one example and you're going to go fly it and that's a pretty amazing thing do you know what they are charging for this do you have an idea about its cost at all jim or or any more details about the alpha electric and their electro and their plans for it no i haven't dan uh it is this is a full production model that thing we know that much we know for sure and uh the big question i have uh, i think it's in the low hundred thousand euro category. That's what they predicted. They've usually been very good on uh, sticking to their prices, at least initially when they uh, introduce them to market. But as far as the recharging, doing that much recharging every day, Randall Fishman, who you know, a pioneer in electric flight in America, says that the problem when you recharge and, and drain the batteries that hard, especially with lots of takeoffs and landings, you're going to have a short, uh, a short life for your battery packs. Pipistrel seems to claim something else, so I want to find out more about the chemistry of the batteries. Is it lithium iron? Is it lithium polymer? Don't really know, because he didn't talk about that the other day. So, Well, so much to discover about electric aircraft. It's exciting, and I'm pleased to see this company, which has been a leader in all kinds of development. This is just another example of it, but their most practical consideration to date, probably, uh, a training aircraft and 100,000 euros. Well, today that's roughly 100,000 U.S., so that's a pretty small number, of which a significant chunk is the batteries alone. And if you get enough cycles out of them, that replaces some fuel costs, so it brings down that number, a uh, gasoline fuel, that is, takes that number down just a little bit. And, and they've got a facility there, their factory, which has got solar cells all over everywhere. They could probably recharge these things for virtually nothing, I'm guessing. Virtually nothing now they've got that infrastructure. Yeah, it's a great plant. Uh, I misspoke a little bit. It's probably more like 120,000, somewhere in that area, not 100,000. 
And uh, the other thing is that Tina said, which I thought was fascinating, they, uh, the whole mission, every, an hourly mission, burns the equivalent of about one point, no, I'm sorry, six liters of gas, one point, uh, one point five, yeah, is that right? One and a half gallons yeah, of gas. About, about, about a gallon and a half in six liters. And, uh, and so wh what was his measurement on that? That's about the fuel usage equivalency of this? That's the equivalent of what this battery pack is, a, a, a gallon and a half of gas. And because of the extreme efficiency of the aircraft, and the regenerating system they have when they're on descent for landing, they're picking back up some of that charge back into the batteries, which allows them to have a good solid hour plus mission, which is, for a two-seat aircraft, as you know, is pretty phenomenal. It's an amazing thing. So a couple of facts to repeat there, I think. The regenerative idea means uh, as the aircraft is powered back, the prop is still turning from the movement through the air. Some of that is acting like a generator, then recharging the batteries at least a little bit, which is a, a very interesting phenomenon. But also, this is such a clean aircraft. Um, it's uh, you know such smooth lines to it, so it slips through the air a little easier. Why that project... Um, uh, from the Bi Aerospace Company that's now doing the Sunflyer. They started out with a 170, electric 172, and it's kind of like, you know, 172 is a great old airplane. We've all flown, flown in it and loved it, and it still does a nice job with a gasoline engine, engine but is a pretty lousy idea for electric because it's just not clean. I mean, look at this thing here and compare that. Uh, it's easy to see how this might work. And I tell us more when you get down there and get a chance to uh, fly the airplane. I'll be envious about that, and I hope you get some good weather this time. Thanks a lot, Dan. From Aero 2015, I'm Dan Johnson speaking with my good friend and fellow journalist James Lawrence of Light Sport and Ultralight Flying Magazine. Look, and I just wrecked a $120,000 airplane. <laughs> no problem, they'll make more. It's like the Doritos. We hope.